Geeky Classic Rock can only imagine and hopefully you get back to chile soon because you guys have had some great shows there yeah well we were fortunate to you know travel and, and be asked to play you know uh besides our backyard to even you know just to go across the border into new jersey or uh, or anywhere any of these 48 you know mainland states of the united states uh it's just a joy, and uh, I can't wait till we can, you know, get back on a plane and uh, and experience it again and, and share uh, the joy of music with everybody because we need to listen to music again and, and just start to feel those emotions that music, only music can give. A song can bring out, you know, such fantastic, strong emotions, and I, I think we're missing that. We're lacking it, and it's just around the corner. Hang in there. <laughs> we're hanging everybody we're hanging we're hanging we might end up at your house and say listen we'll just sit out here if you could just stick your hat out the window and sing us a song we'd be happy yeah. all you have to do is just stand outside I, my, my wife tells me Lydia tells me I play the music pretty loud and I've got some great neighbors they haven't complained yet fantastic we'll drive by we'll do it all right now good. <laughs> yeah that's i mean that's that's what everybody's doing now so it's it's the in thing to do now when journey announced their 50th anniversary tour my mind went to that place of oh my gosh what if you know they bring back some of the guys like you know dean and robert and maybe you have you had that conversation about potentially joining the 50th anniversary tour when that happens again? No, I haven't. And in fact, I wasn't even aware of there was a 50th anniversary. So surprise. When, when is, when, what year is that? Well, it was supposed to happen this year, but it's not. So, ah. um, I was, so maybe they're waiting, you know, like maybe if you reach out and say, Hey, you know, well, I'll, let me put it to you this way. Oh my God. Just to, just to be around for this long is, is really it's such an accomplishment and it's such a it's a great thank you to the fans because this you can't do it without the fans and and i was thinking about this just the other day because i was listening to some youtube music and i was thinking oh my god these guys have been around they've they've stayed intact for all these years and but never mind that even if you could just sustain yourself even if you come to go through as as many band member changes as as some bands do it's quite an accomplishment and it just goes to show you that the music has the strength to to and it's the reason why these bands can sustain themselves uh, case in point journey people will still listen to journey why because it's still around no because the music lives on and on and it's that good and it's Gen, you know, intergenerational, and uh, that's a great feather in their cap, and, and uh, it was great to be a part of that, and I, and that's a pretty fantastic thing. I, I kudos to them, and kudos whether to not, whether or not I'm invited to listen. I'll show up anyway. You heard of the wedding crashes, right? <laughs> Come on, I'll crash that concert. I think you should. I, you know, like again, I think of crazy things. Not that it would be really crazy to have some of the past members involved in the 50th anniversary tour. Even if, like I have said, even if it's just maybe you're at one show and then maybe Dean's at another show and Robert's at another show. You, you, I'm not saying you have to do all of them. I'm just saying maybe a couple here and there. And I think it would sure. be, re- I think the fans would really appreciate that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that uh, uh, Foreigner, uh, my good buddy Lou Graham mm-hmm. and, uh, and Foreigner, who we've toured with often, and as, as a matter of fact, many, many, many moons ago, before, before, before dinosaurs, I, I did a. <laughs> I was produced by Ian uh, McDonald. Oh my gosh! Warner, one of the original members. Wow! Uh, in the old record plant studios here in New York City, and uh, when they all when they all invited those guys back and do, did a bunch of shows with them uh, along their tour, I thought that was wonderful. Oh, absolutely. Great to see them. That was great. And let me tell you, the reviews on those shows were out of this world. Everybody, I, I, again, I think it's just the fans appreciating the fact that 
to see a lot of those original members together again on that stage, all performing together. It, it's, Absolutely. You know, it's just something we love and dream about and <laughs> go crazy about. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's just, it comes down to the fans. Without the fans, there's nothing, to, you'd be playing to empty houses, empty arenas, empty theaters. You have to respect and give them what they want, and that's the name of the game. And I'll thank, I'll thank my fans right here and right now for uh, for the support through the years, for their for their love. Uh, I appreciate it. There's a bond between a, an artist and a fan that is is very special and I I can't say how much I appreciate I can't say it enough how much I appreciate it because there's an energy when you play and perform live that we're missing this year 2020 robbed us of it and there's an energy that is unmatchable so I'm looking forward to doing that again real soon now you get the honor of not only doing a set list of journey songs, but you also sprinkle your own songs in there. And, you know, like we had played Led Zeppelin before you came on. And I want to know, I'm so curious about how you chose the queen, Tina Turner, simply the best, because I, I'm sorry, you, you blow me away. Every time we, we play that, <laughs> we play that from the show. We saw you at in Massachusetts. Right. We play it on the station you just blow that away. And what made you decide to pick that song? Well, um, I was aware of the song from Tina, of course, but prior to that, I'm having a brain, uh, a a memory lapse here. (laughs) It's all Uh, good. uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart, the artist. Quick, 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 quick. Nikki French? No, come on. Uh, bon- Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Oh, so I ha- I go back thanks, the- Al. I'll go away I'll now. I'll go back in the weeds. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I had the wonderful pleasure in honor of, of touring with Bonnie for about a month in Germany with Oof. a wonderful organization called Rock Meets Classics. Oh, my gosh. And Bonnie did that song every night, and I watched her do it every night, and so... As well, I was watching, Jesus, I watch Paul Rogers every night. Oh. And if, if I could tell you what that does to I can't. how inspirational that is. But when I came home and I, and I uh, there was something lacking in the set that I needed that kind of, uh, 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 you know, that groove, that mid-tempo mm-hmm. groove, which, by the way, if you notice, that's, that's my song, If You Want, that you heard earlier. It's got that vibe. It's got that groove. It does, absolutely. Uh, You know, urgent by Farna, urgent, urgent, same thing. And it's got that saxophone. Urgent Mm -hmm. has that wonderful yakety sax. Bonnie, uh, Tina Turner is the best, has that saxophone. That's what I was striving to get on that single of mine, if you want. But anyway, that song, The Best, by Tina, is... Is unmatchable. She's she, what a performance and what a an arrangement. What a great record. So I thought it was a great cover. The guys looked at me like when I was crazy when I brought it to them. I remember they was like, "What? You're crazy. This is not no." Says, so "Give us something else." And I was like, "Just trust me, man, because this is it." And and it it fit like a glove, and uh, and it's a thank you to the fans. And that's how I express myself at the end of the night. I like to play that song to say thank you because I truly think that they are the best. It is. It, Gosh, just you even saying it gives me the chills. I'm not even kidding. I could loan you a sweater. You're so funny. Sorry. Oh my God! I just <laughs> can't. I just my, can't. My son would say that's a father joke. Oh my! That's a, yeah. It's such a dad joke. A dad joke. A dad joke. Oh my! Well, I, we love it. Now, has anyone given you a hard time about doing a Tina Turner song? No. Why would they? Uh, right, well, it's true, but I mean, you know, like you're a guy singing a girl song, but you do it so dang well. You mean a chick song? Yeah. 
I do. It's, it's not. It's it's into. You can mix that gender up in a heartbeat. That's nothing. There's no gender specific song. That's definitely crossing genders. Come on. No, for sure. You well, you yeah. you do it. You do it damn well, Steve. Yeah. Now, now if you want, um, if you want to sing something, I feel pretty, oh so pretty. If you want to <laughs> sing some West Side Story, then you got a, you got issues. Well, I don't think you can have anyone dancing to that at your concert. I'm just saying. I'd be dancing to it. Well, all right. Then you'll be the only one. And what's going to happen then? I'm a Leonard Bernstein guy, man. Give me Leonard every day. All right. Well, okay. You get you get Leonard. <laughs> now, another anniversary you recently celebrated was your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame 16 years ago. What was or is the most vivid memory you have from that crazy, awesome day? Should I truly tell you? Yeah. Honestly? Yeah. All right. Yes, it was a thrill. I had gotten the chance to beat Steve Perry briefly. All too briefly. I should have been more assertive and I should have been more in his face, but I wanted to give him his privacy and I did. I'm sorry now I regret that. Steve, seriously? Yes, but how, wait a minute, now this is very good. All right, okay. Now, this is a good memory because it was an honor and it was a thrill. Now, who doesn't, who doesn't, the thought of a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and that's just incredible. How wonderful was that? Yeah. So that, it's great going to L.A., and, but one memory, by the way, I, I think I had 102 fever that day. My head was swimming. I was eating aspirin, eating. Oh. I was trying to just feel. So I was kind of wishy-washy. But the best memory, the absolute best memory of it, was my dear departed brother-in-law, who at the time was still will always be one of my best friends, if not my best friend, Nick Cirillo, who also had a birthday on the 26th, a couple of days ago. In between the ceremony and the concert in the evening, he took the rest of my family, which, by the way, we did bring the whole family, uh, in-laws and mothers. Oh, nice. Aunts, and we did. We probably had, and friends, we had a minimum of, we had an entourage of 20, minimum, maybe 30. Wow. Wow. And, and we left Snowy, New York, and we came to L.A., and my brother-in-law, who was gastroenterologist, a doctor, bright as they can be, and talented on the guitar as any guitarist almost that I've ever known. He could pick it up and just play like Jeff Beck. They all got on a tourist bus with those double deckers. He, he asked the gentleman, the tour guide, if he could have the microphone. And I saw them driving away, and I heard my brother-in-law's voice, and he started giving the tour. He started ad-libbing the tour of Hollywood Boulevard. And he came back, and he was still on the microphone, still talking, and he just had everybody's in, in stitches <laughs> from the time they left to the time they returned. And that's my memory of my wonderful, beautiful brother-in-law, Nick Cirillo, Dr. Nick. Oh. And that's the best memory, and I'll hold that. It's a gold. That memory is gold to me. And, and you know, you'd think you'd say something like, oh, it was meeting Steve Perry, it was talking to him, it was hanging out with no it was part it was your family which is what you're that type of guy you are that guy who loves your family family first that's what i I see uh you know what again uh i'm I'm just telling it like it is it's true there was one other small little very very interesting thing Uh, we were up getting photographs taken of us as we had just received the the star, and we're all holding these plaques, and there's a a minimum of 10 photographers, a bank of them, you know, a line of them, snapping away, snapping away, and a camera comes down, and I recognize the face, and it's this fella, fellow musician, and a friend's acquaintance of mine, Luigi Scorsia, who you can see in a number of TV shows and a number of movies. He's like a, he's, he's the extra of all extras. Um, he's a photographer. He's got a press pass and he's taken photographs. So um, if you ever look him up on social media, his name is Luigi Babe or Luigi Scorcia. Luigi Babe. Anyway, long story short is 
here's my buddy. He traveled all the way to L.A. to be a photographer. He's shooting the band, and I thought, what? What's the what's the chance? So that was another interesting thing. That is so cool. So so Blackie. you you do have some some interesting memories of that day, which is great. And now, even though you did not have a long time with Steve Perry, probably because you weren't feeling well. We'll give it. We'll give you that. Okay. I mean, that's it is what it is. But you have called Steve Perry just recently. You wished him a happy birthday. You said he was. He is your mentor. What is the one thing that you carry with you that you've learned from Steve Perry? Well, when I say he's my mentor, I, I mean it in this, in this capacity. When I was first started in this business, I was one type of a particular singer, and I used to categorize myself as a scrapper. I don't know if it was the New Yorker in me or the lack of (laughs) knowledge, but I would go out and I would literally, the expression, I'd just go out there, balls out, and I'd leave it all on the field, as the the, the sports folks say. And when when I was given the opportunity to play for the big leagues, I had to learn to sing properly. And apart from just going to several vocal coaches or teachers, just listening to and analyzing Steve's voice, you, you, can, you can learn to sing properly. Uh, you can never learn their, another singer's emotion. You can't, you can't ape that. You can't, uh, you can't replicate that. Because that's one thing every singer has. That's their personality. They, they'll show you how vulnerable they are or how, you know, that's what makes a great singer a great singer. That's what makes Steve such a great singer is that you can feel, when you can feel the song as opposed to just listening to it, that's what you want to do. And Steve did it every time. And that's what I tried to emulate or try to learn from him. And uh, and that's a goal. To this day, you always want to you want to reach the audience. You want to you want to man. There's a there's a little little itty bitty spot in everybody's heart that uh, you know a tone of a of a of uh, or a note or, or a pitch that just turns you on. Say, oh my God, I felt that. Or oh, he's singing to me. Or she's singing to me. Or I feel that. Oh, he really means that. Oh, wow. And he's got the wow factor. So I chased the wow factor. And I learned that from Steve. And we definitely feel that from you when you are on stage. No a, question about it. I, that's the greatest compliment anybody could say. I appreciate that. And I do have to just share something with you from Stephanie, your okay. niece. Um, she just wanted to share a memory of you, but she said that her greatest memory of you is going to a New York Music Awards show where Tall Stories was nominated. She was so excited and so proud of you, and you didn't win, but how exciting it was to be nominated. And then when you sang Open Arms at her wedding, that is pretty hard to top. And then one more, I just have to... Everybody always says, what a nice guy you are. Steve O'Jerry, he's such a nice guy. He's so humble. He's so sweet. And your brother-in-law shared a really cool story with me. He said that when he first started dating your sister, he went over to the house and you were in the background playing the guitar. And he went over to you and tried to show you some things that he knew. And he said he wasn't really great on the guitar, but you were gracious enough to say, oh, thank you very much. And you were listening to what he had to say. And then when he went over again, but you didn't know he was there, you were jamming. You were just like a virtuoso on that guitar. And that touched him because he said, you're such a humble man. And even back in the day, you were so humble to just graciously take what he was telling you that he thought he was helping you with. But you just took it in as, you know, just being kind and, and not saying, hey, listen, I already know that. No, thank you for sharing 
your information with me. So you are very loved by so many people and you really are a humble, humble person. Well, to, to my, my niece, my lovely Stephanie and my brother-in-law, Alex, I love you both. Alex, by the way, you did show me what you showed me. Look, everybody has a little something they could share and I could rub off on somebody. I don't care what level of, you know, whatever, wherever you're at and doing whatever you're doing, there's always something to learn from somebody. And I did learn from him, but probably more than whatever he showed me on the guitar, he had a record collection that I absolutely adored. And he turned me on to the Moody Blues. Oh. Uh, is there, is, was the record called Seven Sojourn or something? Could that be the name of the title yes. of the album? Yes, yeah. Oh, my God, I had adored that record and to this day i just still think of that wonderful band and the great songs on it he had this great extension record collection and uh i remember that and that and that helps mold a person you know that's part of my da dna that is odd. But again, you know, here you are being gracious and it is so wonderful to know that you've learned from everybody. Probably I'm sure that's touched your life. Now, a long time ago, you talked about your younger days in Brooklyn, how you performed at block parties. They were steaming hot summer nights and how some of the paisans wanted you to play Sinatra and you did it because you knew you didn't want to lose a foot or something. Now, <laughs> you also said that People should step away from their computer and their video games. What's one thing today, if you could bring it back from yesterday, that you would take into your life and say, you know what, we should all do that today? Ooh. Um, I think just listen to each other. I think, I think one thing I'd love to see, never mind the country, but the whole world, it is just been a a dream of mine is just uh we forgot to listen we we everybody's busy talking to each other talking at the same time and uh, if i may say this i'm going to give jonathan kane a pat on the back jonathan came taught me how to listen uh he used to slow me down because i used to be so excited i used to be like a bull in a china closet when i get together with him and I want to express myself and talk over him and interrupt him. He say, Steve, hold on. Wait a minute. Pace yourself. Just listen. And he taught me to be a better listener. And I think if everybody just stops a little bit and listens to each other, I think we'd learn a lot from each other and learn a lot more about each other. And I think the world would get along a lot better if we listen to what somebody has to say. So you can then process it think about it, and then say, wait a while. Have you been saying this the whole time? I haven't been listening. We've been wasting a lot of time. Let's get back on track, listen to each other, compromise, whatever it takes. But that's the first thing that comes to mind. I don't know. You can still have your computer games and you still have your, you know, Facebooks and Twitters and this, that, and the other thing. But, um... Yeah, I'm still guilty of it. We're still, I'm still learning myself. Sometimes I don't listen, but I try to remember. I try to be a better listener, and I think it makes us, you know. I'm humbled by Jonathan's teaching me, again, one of my uh, my mentors. And we're humbled by you. We appreciate everything that you do, and we cannot wait until your album comes out. And if you want, now, is there a release date for that, or are we just lucky enough to hear this right now? Uh, if you don't mind, I think what we're going to do is just prepare, finish the artwork on it, and we're going to put it out as a single. Fantastic. We're going to get the rest of the record. We have half of it mixed, and the other half is, is like it's like pulling teeth, to be honest with you. So as soon as it is ready, even if I have to release another two or three singles, that may be the case uh, before we do the entire record. But again, it will be called Seven Ways Till Sunday. And it's a special. The only gift I could possibly give to anybody is my music. And I had a lot of friends to help me along the way. And uh, I'm very excited to eventually share this with everybody. But tomorrow we have 
lose myself coming out with you and bad penny we're very excited about that that song is so great and thank you for that and i am so grateful that you talk to me i i i don't think you understand like i, I am so happy that you decided to do this with us tonight and everyone is very thankful as well it's been a crazy year for everyone and one thing i have learned is how important that music is to everybody and you steve are a part of what is responsible for lifting us up when we're down and i think i can speak on behalf of everyone that we thank you for giving us something to smile about and steve we want you to stay strong stay creative and again thank you so much for doing what you do kiki of kiki.fm and my good brother al there Oh, uh, I love you guys. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks to everybody out there listening. I uh, appreciate you. I hope it didn't bend it too far. No. And uh, but it was a joy. And it was a pleasure. And it was an honor. To, uh, Steve, to share this Steve, you can't go yet because we have a uh, play a little song here for you. And I got a couple more people who want to talk to you real quick. Can, can, can you can you hang on for a, a couple more minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 